3D printing is a technology that has empowered people of all backgrounds and professions to create. Like any new technology, it has a bit of a learning curve, but luckily for you newcomers, I've compiled a list of 10 tips you should keep at the front of your mind while you experience the process of 3D printing. The more you 3D print, the easier it will be to determine which material is right for your project. There isn't a one-size-fits-all material. There's a lot of different ones that work better for some jobs and work poorly for other jobs, and that's where you will want to change to a different material. Take PLA for example. It is one of the easiest, if not the easiest material to 3D print with, and it comes in a ridiculous array of colors. Some even sparkle or fluoresce. But PLA isn't designed to work in hot, warm temperatures, like in a car or in the sun. ABS can survive direct exposure to sunlight, but it does have a steeper learning curve in order to be able to print it well. So you may want to use PLA for your prototypes, which will be used indoor where it's cool, and when you're ready for something functional that needs to go somewhere warm, you can use ABS or PETG so you can yield better printing results. It's important to be able to weigh the benefits and constraints of different materials before you select a filament to yield the best 3D print results. Removing filament is as easy as clicking unload on some 3D printers, but for others, it's a more manual process you're gonna have to walk through on your own. In order to remove filament, you do need to heat up the 3D printer first because the tip of the filament is going to stay locked in the nozzle if you leave it cold. So by heating it up, it becomes pliable and you can actually remove it. Let's take a look at the procedure. Step one, start by heating up the 3D printer to the printing temperature of the material you have in it. If you're trying to remove PLA, set it to 200 degrees Celsius, ABS at 230 degrees Celsius, etc. Step two, once it's at temperature, release the tension on the filament by disengaging the idler. Step three, Push the filament slightly until a small amount comes out of the nozzle. Step four, once you see filament come out, gently pull on it to remove it from the extruder. Step five, snip the tip of the new filament at an angle with some flush cutters and insert it into the extruder, making sure it feeds through properly. Step six, if it's a different material than what was previously loaded, then have the temperature set to whichever printing temperature was higher. Step seven, manually push filament to the nozzle or control the extruder from the menu to feed the filament through. Step eight, once you see the new material come through cleanly and without mixing of colors or burnt material from the previous filament, you're all set. Getting the bed of your 3D printer flat and making sure that the first layer is the right distance from your nozzle is essential to being able to make successful 3D prints. It's the foundation for which all the other layers are built upon. Many 3D printers feature some sort of sensor that will automatically detect what that distance is and be able to do it without your intervention. But that's not industry standard, so you may find printers that don't have any sort of sensor and it needs to be done by hand. In those cases, there's usually going to be some sort of thumb screw or knob on the underside of the bed that you can adjust to move the bed further and closer to the nozzle. You should follow any instructions that are in the manual for your 3D printer, but in general, these steps to level your bed are as follows. Step one, tighten down all the screws at each corner so you have enough room to loosen them later. Step two, home the Z-axis. On some printers, Z0, home, may be too far from the bed, even when all the screws are loose. In that case, you'll need to move the Z minimum end stop slightly lower to be able to calibrate. Step three, power down the printer or select release motors or motors off, depending on the printer. Most printers have something to this effect within the LCD menus. This will allow you to move the printhead without having the motors locked in place. Step four, move the printhead over each screw that levels the bed. Insert a piece of paper between the nozzle and the bed and loosen the screw until there's a very slight resistance when you pull on the paper. Step five, repeat this for the other screws. Step six, after adjusting all screws, check your work by moving the nozzle over the screws again and making sure they didn't shift from your previous adjustments. Step seven, start a print. You can make adjustments while the 3D printer is printing to fine tune your first layer. Once you have it leveled, it should stay leveled for a pretty good while, but you may need to go back in there every once in a while and adjust the screws to bring it back to perfect level. Changing a nozzle is important for 3D printer maintenance, and in fact, changing one after heavy use can make a big difference in your 3D printer's print quality. Or maybe you want to change your nozzle to a different material like hardened steel so you can print with abrasive filaments, or to a different nozzle orifice diameter so you can get your prints finished faster, like using a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. Knowing how to change your 3D printer's nozzle is an important tool to be able to keep in your 3D printer's tool set. The basics of it is, heat up the hot end to loosen the filament from the nozzle. Use channel lock pliers to hold the heater block, then use an appropriately sized wrench to unscrew the nozzle, and then reverse the steps with the new nozzle. 
without putting enough force on the nozzle to snap it off. Just one finger tight is enough. Some models are impossible to print if you don't use a support structure to help them out. Whereas others, by including support material, you actually remove some of the details that would otherwise have been there. So it's important to be able to identify whether or not a model will be able to need support structures. I've kind of broken it down into different categories that should help you decipher whether or not models might actually need supports. Just because a model has overhangs doesn't mean it needs supports. The general rule is if the angle is greater than 45 degrees, consider adding support. But some models are specifically designed to not need supports, even when breaking this rule. Bridging is also a 3D printing technique that allows a completely flat surface to be printed in midair if it has an edge on either side to join. Bridges won't require supports to 3D print successfully. Scenario 2. Cylindrical holes through the side of a model don't usually need support either, despite having sections of it at angles greater than 45 degrees. If you don't have adequate layer cooling, you might notice some drooping along the ceiling, but otherwise it will 3D print successfully. Scenario 3. Internal features may be filled in by supports and be difficult to remove. Take some of these engine parts for example. These have internal channels that would be completely filled in and be nearly impossible to remove without marring the finished 3D print surface. Scenarios to consider using supports. Most 3D models will need some form of support. Sections completely unsupported and midair will need some scaffolding to use as a foundation before the rest of the part can be printed. Others may be at a positive angle, but extreme enough to necessitate supports to create a better bottom surface. Knowing the right time to use supports is something that does take learning, but as you progress as a 3D printer user, you will begin to identify when supports are and are not necessary and to what degree. Nearly all 3D printer slicing programs, called slicers, can identify where supports are needed per user set criteria and generate support structures. More advanced slicers like Matter Control even give you the ability to add in or remove individual supports so you can manually adjust for any problem areas. Over time, you may even find yourself designing new 3D models that either have built-in supports so that you can just break them out and not need auto-generated supports, or use clever design techniques so you don't need to generate supports at all. Bed adhesion is a huge factor in the success of your 3D prints, due in part to the compatibility between the 3D printing filament and the material that the bed surface is made from. Some bed surfaces have benefits like having a higher maximum printing temperature, easier part removal, or it's just easier to apply in general. To sum up the basics, glass is great for PLA when it's heated, for nylon when it is heated and has PVA glue stick, and for a variety of other different materials when heated and have Magigu or 3D Gloop applied to it. Layer Lock Garolite works well for nylon and nylon composites when you have a thin layer of PVA glue stick on it. Layer Lock Powder Coated PEI is great for general purpose printing, with PVA glue stick for flexibles and PETG as a release agent. Flexible and magnetic spring still sheets like the BuildTac Flex Plate or Layer Lock are great for easy print removal or changing between different materials. BuildTech adhesive sheets are great for all-purpose printing, although avoid printing too close or 3D prints could weld to it. And PEI is great for all-purpose 3D printing, but be sure to use PVA as a release agent for PET or for flexibles. As you build out your mental 3D printing toolbox, don't forget about your physical toolbox. The more you 3D print, the more you'll learn which tools work best for you, which ones didn't have as much use as you thought, and where you have some gaps in your tool set. I have some tools here that I would recommend for you. A spatula. The BuildTac spatula can get underneath 3D prints easily with its flat bottom handle, enabling you to remove your 3D prints without having to force a spatula at an awkward or dangerous angle. Flush cutters. These are immensely helpful for removing support material, for making a nice clean cut when trimming filament before loading, and snipping off any imperfections on your 3D prints. A brass brush. Brass is soft enough to not mar your nozzle when it needs to be cleaned of any buildup. Calipers absolutely necessary when trying to 3D model parts that have to fit in specific places, or when you just need an idea of how big a 3D model actually is. Hex key set. When you open up your printer or assemble multi-part models, you'll need a variety of hex wrenches. To give yourself a head start, you can also check out the Matter Hackers toolkits that we've curated to have all the tools that we think are most helpful for the 3D printing experience. Always aim the spatula away from yourself when you're removing a 3D print. I know it can get tempting to try and get a better angle and aim towards you, but it's all too easy for the print to suddenly release and all that force that was going into the print is now going into the palm of your hand. 
So if you just can't get the print up, try to pry up a corner to get just a little bit more leverage on it. Or try to get it up from all sides or and stick the spatula underneath and give it the tap with the back of a screwdriver so you can give it just a little bit of force to get it off before you do any damage. We were all beginners at one point, and being bad at something is the first step to being sort of good at something. So don't be afraid to ask questions when you don't know what's going wrong. Maybe what you're reading right now doesn't pertain to what you're working on, but months down the line it helps you solve a problem before you have to ask for help. Taking in all you can about 3D printing can even help guide you through the development process of prototyping a product or manufacturing aid by giving you a deeper understanding of 3D printers and how to design a 3D model to work in ways not possible with traditional manufacturing. Filament in general is not cost prohibitive to a project's completion. Sometimes it makes more sense to do step one, 3D printing, 10 times over than to do it once poorly and pay for it down the road with elbow grease or a precarious installation that barely makes it useful. 3D printing errors should be few and far between by following this detailed guide here, but even the Matter Hackers pros have our off days where scrapping a print is better for the finished product than trying to make it work. Consider it part of the 3D printing iterative process. These tips are a good start, but there's still much to learn as you work your way up to the title of 3D printing expert. The information provided here has been helpful for many on their 3D printing journey, but if you feel like there's something important to share that I didn't mention here, be sure to leave that in the comments below so everyone can learn with you. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Hey there, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that top 10 tips on getting started with 3D printing. I wrote this with the Alec from four years ago in mind, so I hope this helps you in the same way it would probably help me. If you want to read some in-depth articles, you can go to matterhackers.com or to stay up to date with all of our digital manufacturing content, be sure to click subscribe. See you in the next one.